Hey everyone, Kyle here. If you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let me explain a little bit. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on listening platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcast, and so much more. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. So download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's A-N-C-H-O-R.fm. They'll have everything you need all in one place. I can speak from my experience. It's been awesome so far and super easy. So go check it out, guys, and we'll see you later. Welcome, everyone. This is Our Travel Experiences. I'm your host, Kyle Rasmussen, and today I have with me Rachel. Rachel, how are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. Glad uh, glad you're here. Um, I appreciate you taking time to do this. Um, I'm really excited to talk about some of your travel experiences. Um, you have, I feel, some unique experiences of traveling in a van with, uh, with a whole family. Um, so I'm really interested to hear more about your story and how you um, how you made this happen. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited. That it's definitely not something we um, thought was going to be possible as a family, but we've been really happy to see it all kind of come together. Yeah, that's awesome. So how did this, uh, this whole traveling in a van with, with your kids um, start? So it's always been a dream of ours, um, especially my husband and he would search vans constantly and be showing me vans nightly and um, like most people when they see us my first thought was like that's never gonna work with all of our kids yeah especially if they'd ever show me a van that didn't have a bench seat already in it you know i just would dismiss it right away saying that that doesn't work for us um but we love to talk about it and uh talk about it as if it was something that we would do someday you know and it was this pipe dream of ours and um then at the time I was pregnant with our third child so three of four and um due to some uh, medical issues that I have uh, it caused problems for her and she uh when I was trying to give birth to her her heart stopped and it was yeah it was a scary situation that resulted in an emergency c-section that didn't go great for either of us and there was um a point in uh during it that my husband thought he was losing both of us and it you know it just kind of um made us think about life and kind of refocus our priorities and um, when we both made it through safely, um, we kind of took that to heart as that we only have this short time with these kiddos when they're little and we wanted to make the most of it. And it was right after that that we really buckled down and got to look in and, and bought our van shortly after that. So, Yeah, wow. That's a, that's a crazy story. Um, I was find it interesting how those types of you know near-death experiences really changes your perspective on life it's um, so true it really makes you kind of think about what's you know what's the most important thing and if this would mm-hmm. all go away today you know what what do we have left and for us it was just you know the memories and the time spent with our kids so yeah, yeah, definitely. So after that, you guys, you guys started working on on making this uh, dream a reality. How did that all kind of come to fruition? So we actually found our van in a kind of unique place. We found it on Facebook Marketplace. Um, oh wow! <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> and uh, it it wasn't outfitted completely to to accommodate a family, but it did have a bench seat and so we felt like we could make it work um and so we got it and then we had to change things like put in the double queen bunks that we have in the back of our van um to accommodate more people and we're we're very short people and so we can all sleep sideways in the van and so 
two queen beds are actually quite roomy for us. <laughs> I guess that's an advantage there. <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I had someone reach out to me the other day and said, I, we're 6'5". I was like, I don't know how to help you. We're, <laughs> we live in a different world. Um, but uh, so we, yeah, we added the bed. We added, um, so while our bench is factory, we did add a two-seater bench up front in our van or had it added. We didn't install the seat. Mm -hmm. um, to accommodate a sixth seat for when I uh, had my fourth little one. And um, those are the major changes that we made to, to accommodate um, having so many people in the van. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looked, when I was looking at it online, it looks like that, that bench seat also moves against the wall so you can get it out of the way. Yes, that is like my favorite part of our van. So it, um, the cabinets in the van are built so they fit the exact length that the bench is sideways. So when we get to camp, we pop the bench out and turn it sideways in the van and it fits snugly in there so it doesn't move around. And then it becomes our couch and it's <laughs> where we, you know, sit and do crafts with the kids or um, have dinner or whatever. So it really, it allows us to open the space and kind of use it how, I guess, a typical van couple would do in having mm -hmm. eating area and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's that's so creative. Um, when I saw it, I was like, oh, wow, that's such a smart idea. <laughs> it's um, it's been a game changer for us. Yeah. Everything has to have at least two purposes in the van to make it work, I feel like. <laughs> there you go. Um, so how much work did it take to actually get the van to where you guys could actually go travel and, and camp in it? So I will say our van is very simple. I feel like a lot of people um, are able to deck their vans out to the nines, and which are beautiful. Don't get me wrong. But mm -hmm. I look at those white cabinets and see all my children coming in from a dirty hike. And how <laughs> that would be for us. But yeah. no. We don't have, you know, we don't have a shower. We have a little cassette toilet because um, that's a lot of people to try to get through the night without a toilet. But we don't have a lot of the, I guess, the fancier amenities. So getting us, I guess, roadworthy for us was pretty darn simple because um, we just wanted, wanted the basics of, of sleeping and eating and driving. And... Um, so I would say the bed insulation took uh, a day and a half and we were pretty much good to go. Oh, wow. So was it like a couple of weeks or a couple of months that it was, it was all ready to go once you started working on it? Oh, a couple of weeks. Um, because wow. okay, so when we, um, sorry, I probably left that out. When we found it, uh, it uh it had the bench seat but it also had like it had a single bed in the back um and so it was converted in those ways and we just had to add to it to add space for a family and so hmm. it wasn't we didn't need to do it from bare bones yeah okay that's nice yeah i've seen a lot of times you know some people will just totally gut a van and then it takes you know almost a whole year to have it ready to go yeah, yeah, definitely. We luckily did not have to gut it because I think we would still be working on it yeah. later. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm sure with kids and, and all the other stuff you got going on, I'm sure there's probably not a lot of time for that. No, no. There's always, you know, a to-do list in my mind of things that would be nice to add to the van. But mm -hmm. at this point, it's like, you know, if it gets us out to the location and gets us having fun, that's, that's all. Uh, we're really asking of the van so mm -hmm. yeah that's the important part um so how often are you guys are you guys traveling in the van oh man as much as we can um mm -hmm. sat down and uh we're going over our schedule and realized that um we're somewhere new every week of june and uh you know it kind of makes us sit back and think when are we gonna come visit home for a bit. Um, but 
uh, summertime especially um, just because we live in a place where there's winter and that's um, so we travel down south a lot in the winter but mm -hmm. there's a lot of um, northern options in in the winter um, that aren't freezing and covered in snow so um, but in the summer we're gone about the whole time we'll take a a short hiatus from traveling in the van to go to Hawaii, but uh, wow, yeah, <laughs> so. which I'm sure is a, is a whole other experience with four kids. <laughs> yes, <laughs> here's to hoping we survive a plane ride. Yeah, um, so how long has it been since you actually started traveling in the van with the family? So, we um, we got our van shortly before the world shut down in 2020, um, which I feel was good timing because then yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like the popular thing to do yet. And so mm. our van didn't cost us our firstborn, like it seems to yeah. cost people at this point. Um, we, we look at vans now and it's crazy how expensive they are. Yeah. So getting ours before quarantine and stuff one allowed us to travel like you know when everybody got sent home is when we found the most freedom because mm -hmm. my, my husband was working you know the typical nine to five we were all uh, doing the in-person school and it was like everything shut down and we suddenly uh, had this freedom and were able to travel through all of that so mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's it's amazing how that kind of changed things too. Yeah, yeah, I know it was a terribly sad time for many, but within our within our family, it was a it was a really good uh, opportunity for us to spend more time together. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, definitely. Like from my perspective, I mean, I I don't have kids or, or anything right now, but like just seeing that okay the way things have always been done doesn't necessarily mean i have to keep doing it that way um it showed me that there's a lot of opportunities out there if, if you choose to see them yeah. uh, so it's definitely changed my perspective the last couple of years and it kind of led me to this point where i'm now doing this podcast <laughs> i love it and i hope that that's what uh you know people as a whole are understanding that we don't have to you know, fit into this box that we've always felt like we have to fit. More jobs can be done remotely and independently. And mm -hmm. I feel like when people have the freedom to to move and explore as well as do jobs, that they work harder and do better. And it's beneficial for everyone. Yeah, so, yeah definitely. That's kind of how the world is trending is to go Yeah, that way. I do too. <laughs> Um, yeah, what, what has it been like? Um, I, I mean, you've gained a, a pretty big following on Instagram. What has that been like um, as you've continued your travels? Ooh, that's a mixed bag. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, there are parts that I have absolutely loved. Um, you know, building a community of like-minded people, of families that also love to adventure has been so amazing. And these people that I've gotten to meet um, both through Instagram, but then also get to meet them in person has been an amazing experience. And people are truly so good. Um, a lot of people followed us from, you know, when, uh, we gave birth, when I gave birth to Remy, the one that was um, such a disaster. And, and then they really rallied around us when we, kind of went against medical advice and had a fourth baby. And so he was high risk through the whole thing and people were loving and supportive. And we had, he got little um, gifts from people when he was born. And even we got, we all got COVID when he was like three weeks old. And oh, no. I know, right? And people that I have never met had meals sent to us. Like it was just incredible. Wow see yeah it just, people could be so amazing um and then on that same token a lot of people see six people in a van and don't really care to know a lot more beyond that and <laughs> you, 
we've gotten definitely some of the more nasty things I've heard in my life come at us. Um, oh, wow. Everything from being child abuse or neglectful or that we're pushing our dreams on our kids um, to even my husband and I are uh, an interracial couple and that uh, seems to get some people fired up um, wow. biracial children. So it's it's been a wonderful thing to grow a community, but you definitely put yourself out there to kind of hear everybody's opinions on your parenting and your life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, you gotta take that with you know, knowing that you're putting yourself out there and that kind of comes with it. Yeah, yeah. I feel like you really summed up the the good and the bad of, of social media right there. Um, there, there, you can see a lot of good and have access to a lot of, a lot of people around the world in a great community. And you can also, you know, be in the spotlight for people to, you know, take out some of their frustrations or their anger on you as well. Yeah, it, you definitely get everything, but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but like well, said, that, that is the internet. We, we all get to speak our minds, I guess. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I mean, it seems like, you know, as a family, you guys are having a ton of fun exploring all these amazing places. Um, and it's helped me, you know, looking through your, your Instagram, seeing some of these places that I never even would have heard of if it wasn't for you. Oh, thank you. I hope that we're, you know, showing places and inspiring families. And Kyle, you are right. It has been just the time of our lives. We have so much fun. Um, our kids, Mike and I like to say, are truly our best friends. Um, they're funny, witty little people to be around. And uh, traveling like this has given us so much time to be together 24-7, um, mm -hmm. as well as, you know, just uh, bring the world to them like it was kind of our way of giving them the world and having nature right uh, right at our doorstep I don't know if you've seen uh, one of the picture we have but one day we were camping up in the mountains and this was before we got our cassette toilet and this was kind of a, a turning point for us on that too but we uh, woke up you know it was early in the morning and we popped the doors open so that we can Got, get all the kids out to, to use the bathroom and there were two massive bull moose chilling right outside our van oh, wow. we were, we you know backed all the children back up and oh, get back in and <laughs> I they didn't leave so we were in a way stuck on on the bed of our uh, van with the doors open just watching these guys for like two hours and wow it was an incredible experience just to see these massive, beautiful creatures. Um, but also did prompt us to get a toilet in the van. Cause <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's, that's an amazing experience. I mean, that's not something a lot of people get to say that they've seen. Right. That's, and I hope it's something my kids remember forever. Cause it was, it was a pretty neat time. Mm -hmm. How, how old are your kids? Um, my oldest just turned eight and then um, six, three, and Enzo just turned seven months this week. Okay. Wow. So are the older ones, um, you know, able to kind of share their thoughts on the, on the trips and I, I guess, how are you seeing it through their eyes right now? Yeah. Oh, I love seeing things through through their eyes and seeing that they recognize you know the beauty of places and when we're in a neat place um, I was a little worried at first that uh, they would be like you know we have no toys and we have no thing <laughs> uh, and to see them they started making stick dolls and drawing faces on the sticks that they found and I mean they adapted quickly and love it we do check in with them especially when we're we're gone for uh, longer periods and always give them the option like are you doing okay is it time to head home and um, they have never once chose to leave the van they uh, just say how much they love it and um, 
big yeah. uh, my three-year-old it was <laughs> at one point someone asked her like oh where do you live and she's like in the mountains and i'm like yeah all <laughs> right uh, <laughs> that's funny <laughs> and that's when you know that was a happy time for me to see that she recognizes that you know home is where we're we all are together at any point so mm -hmm. uh, but yeah the older ones can definitely voice it more their enjoyment and they have little travel journals that they draw pictures of the places that we go and oh that's cool so yeah it's been it's been really neat to let them see the world in a little bit different way or at least our little corner of the world mm -hmm. yeah that, that sounds amazing i know thinking back to my my childhood anytime that uh, you know, I traveled with my family. We we traveled a lot for for sports when I was a kid, and we would drive to uh, you know different parts of the country and, and be up in the mountains and that sort of thing. And honestly, th those were my favorite memories as a kid. Just all of us being together, exploring this this new place for us. Um, so that's that's really cool to see that you know their your kids are are seeing that as well. Yeah, I, I love to hear that, and I love, yeah, when adults can say that. Looking back, this was my favorite, because I sure, I sure hope that's what they say when people are talking to them, you know, 10 years from now, that mm -hmm. they loved all the adventures. Yeah. I've been the same with you. I grew up traveling with sports, and our kids don't do any of that at this time. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe our life will change, but so it's been fun to have a different method of uh, traveling for us yeah yeah and i'm sure they'll they'll see the the world in such a a different light compared to people who never have gotten to have those sorts of experiences uh, yeah. i know it helped me really kind of see the world differently and and i feel like it made me a better person to have all those experiences as a kid i sure i would have had more <laughs> yeah i i sure hope so i can already you know i see it benefit them and uh, getting to meet new people wherever we go and, and things like that, as well as, you know, seeing people that look like them. Um, I have one little girl that lights up when she sees other people of color and uh, it's because her mom's so white, I think, but uh, <laughs> she, you know, she gets really excited to see those things. And in the midst of one of our uh, times of people voicing their opinion on the internet, uh, someone said, why don't you make your account private and, you know, shield your kids from getting those kind of comments. And I thought about that for a minute and I thought, well, that's because that's the exact opposite of what I want for my children. I don't mm -hmm. want my children to think that they have to hide or become smaller because of someone else's opinion that they need yeah. to know that they, they do belong anywhere and everywhere. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, so yeah, we're gonna. That's what traveling with them, I think, does for me. Is I want them to show. I want to show them, especially having three girls, that they can be outdoorsy and strong and mm -hmm. capable and all those things that that maybe sometimes those comments allude to them not being. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love. I love that you think that way. Um, it's just sad that some people, you know, choose to choose to voice their, their negative opinions out there. Um, but so I'm curious, what does a typical trip look like for you guys? So we, a typical one. <laughs> yes. Oh man. Um, hiking is definitely like our activity of choice. And so we will plan our trips around like a select few hikes that we're wanting to do in an area um and right now with the really tiny ones uh you know we still have like nap times and things to that uh, affect our schedule a lot and so um for us <laughs> i mean days look pretty routine and that we like get up and have breakfast that we head out on a um hopefully the biggest hike of the day we do in the morning so that the baby will sleep while we hike and then we get back and the toddler will sleep and we'll all kind of hang 
out and chill. And then when they're up, we try to fit another one in. And um, that can seem pretty monotonous, I think. But for us, like that is our favorite way to explore. And especially our, our afternoon hikes, we are trying to fit, you know, uh, encourage learning and stuff with the kids. So those are more um, full of catching bugs and using our <laughs> identifier app to figure out what we found and um, is just letting them explore and I feel like the dirtier they come into the van at night the better we've done yeah <laughs> that's cool I like that are, are you typically going for for like a weekend trip or do you take a week off from work or how does that work if um our girls do, I have one daughter that uh, loves theater. And so um, there's times that we're bound to home uh, when she's rehearsing and stuff. And they'll, um, then it'll tr be uh, weekends. But our kids are so little that we're not really extremely concerned with missing a lot of school yet. Um, mm -hmm. As they get older, um, that will be more of a thing. But right now they love they love learning and they stay on top of things and so um you know taking off a week here and there we just we don't mind doing that it's not you know we're not concerned with school yet so we do do weekends um i mean i would say every weekend we're gone but then yeah we uh, try to fit a week uh in each month to just be uh, exploring as well yeah that's cool I like that um, what have been some of the most memorable moments uh, that you've had while traveling definitely the moose was was one um, and then um, you know we've we've done everything from very well established campgrounds that have playgrounds for the kids to um, boondocking in remote places and I think just waking up to new places is one of the most exciting parts for us um, and I uh, seeing the, the kids see a new place is always fun for me they, this is so simple it's not even a big moment but we bought a we bought a swing that we um, anchor into the, the top of our van and putting Lorenzo in the swing for the first time and having him giggle. And we were out in the middle of nowhere just by a big uh, ravine in Southern Utah. Like that was a favorite moment for me, just having his happiness. And there wasn't another person within miles of us it was mm -hmm. a favorite of mine for sure. Um, and then the, I mean, the wildlife um, from the moose. So we've had plenty of deer in camp to bison. Um, those have all been really neat experiences. We haven't had a bear yet, and I feel okay about that. Yeah, that's probably good. <laughs> yeah. Um, on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, actually with the swing, that's actually how I originally found you. Um, I saw that video pop up and I was like, oh my gosh, that, that's so cool. Right. This, this little kid swinging out, you know, next to this ravine, which it looked like a beautiful area and it looked like you all, you guys were all just having a good time. And I was like, wow, that's someone that I want to, you know, talk to. Oh, that makes me so happy that that's how you found it. Cause that... <laughs> Yeah, that was honestly just one of the happiest days. He was so happy. He had never been in a swing. It was just, it was pretty great. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Um, so I'm sure, you know, traveling with six people in a van um, has some challenges, which you mentioned the toilet already. That sounds like one of the challenges. Um, what are some other challenges that you guys face while traveling? Oh, man. We've had one of our daughters. Um, it's actually why we're home now get sick on the road um because he's apparently just going through everyone um and we don't have like a walk back to access the back of the van anymore since we added a third seat up front 
So I was like hopping over the seat every few minutes to help her. And that was, um, their death exams definitely, I feel like are not ideal to have sicknesses when you don't have yeah. proper plumbing and things like that. Um, so that has been a challenge for us. And then, you know, I feel like typical parenting challenges are, are present. You know, they're still little kids. They still have moments that emotions are high or they're overly tired. And um, that can be a lot when it's a small space. Um, yeah. You know, big emotions in a small space can be a challenge, which is why we try to get them outside um, a lot, but that's not always an option. And so, you know, figuring out how to to let kids have wind down time and try to get them some alone time while being all very much together. Mm -hmm. We've kind of used that top bunk as a place that they can escape if they just need a minute <laughs> to be by themselves so um and then i mean road trips present the challenge and the kids don't want to sit still and that yeah when we're going long distances that can be you know i feel like when it was just mike and i you know 14 hour drive is no big deal we can mm -hmm. hit that in a day and you know a 14 hour drive now takes multiple stops and uh yeah you got to stop at the playground and run around for a couple hours so what we could do in a day takes us two to three now mm -hmm. yeah what's what's the longest you've traveled with um with all the kids um this is, as a rule we actually won't go further than six hours in a day um we just um i mean we've Done, we've done trips that are upwards of 30 but not then mm -hmm. we just know that they take a long time because we're not gonna um make them be in the in the car for more than half the day and so we're we're slow travel partners <laughs> <We're> not, <laughs> um, if anyone were to ever caravan with us we go for a couple hours and then stop and so yeah mm -hmm. our rule of thumb is six in a day and then you call it and uh, reevaluate. So, yeah, I feel like that's a, a smart idea, especially with you know, young kids around. Um, I know I wouldn't have liked sitting around, you know, all day in a in a car or a van as a kid. Yeah, and there's there's only so much you can do. We have all the the tricks and up our sleeve from <laughs> you know uh, audio books and even screen time to magnet books and blocks and coloring papers but at the end of the day they're they're little kids with active bodies and we got to just stop and play <laughs> yeah yeah definitely <laughs> um where would you say has been your favorite place that you've you've gone with the family Ooh. so um actually where this that swing video is is down in it's near bullfrog it's it's clear down by it's lake pal but mm -hmm. it's like one of the finger streams that have dried up so the ravine used to be lake pal but it isn't anymore and so um because of that it's like a town that used to be a a hub with uh water access and was popular but now it's all dried up and there's there's nothing there <laughs> i think that's mm -hmm. what that my favorite is because we're so far from anything else um, yeah i really like going down there um and then i'm from idaho originally so i always love when we go up into the uh, grand teton area um, mm -hmm. and explore up there because then i'm feel like I'm going home. Yeah. Yeah, Idaho has so many beautiful places in it. Um, it does. I, I always love exploring Idaho. Um, in Wyoming and in, in, in Montana and all those places. Yeah, it, 
pretty much everywhere that like surrounds Yellowstone. I feel like yeah, <laughs> it's a good spot. I agree. Um, is there any places that you you have or want to go back to? One place we haven't been but want to. We really want to head up and go through Canada. Um, mm. The timing of when we got our van, you know, that hasn't really been a, a possible thing in the last few years. Um, mm. But we're really looking forward to when we can go through Banff and uh, oh, explore up that area because that just looks amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's something. That's something I really want to do too. I'd love to just take like a month and just drive across Canada and go see everything there is to see. Yes, yes, it looks incredible. I would also love to see it in the winter, but I haven't mm-hmm. sold my husband on that idea. <laughs> somewhere even colder than Utah. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Arizona sounds more fun. Than, yeah, than yeah. <laughs> He's like, we can go to Florida, or <laughs> yeah, uh, that's funny. Um, well, any uh, other exciting moments or anything else you want to share with with the listeners? Um, you know, not to get on a soapbox, but I guess what I would like to share anytime I have an opportunity to uh, kind of share our story. Um, yeah. The main thing that I love to share is, um, you know, there's kind of this idea in life, like do your travel, do your adventure before you have kids because then it's over. And I just like to put my plug in that not only is it not over, but it just becomes sweeter. I mean, these Mm -hmm. kids have an eye for magic that we, that we overlook, you know, when we see the sun reflecting on the the trails, they see fairies and it's just, it adds such a, an innocence and a beauty to our travels that that's what I like to say is that, you know, adventuring, traveling, all the things that you love are possible. And um, I would even argue better uh, when you have kids and so i guess i like to say life's not over it's just a a different adventure beginning yeah yeah i like that i mean yeah maybe it presents some different challenges but definitely it's beautiful in a lot of other ways um, that you might not have thought of compared to like traveling on your own or with just your spouse or something like that as well yes i find most things that are worth it take a take a bit more work Mm mm-hmm You know, of course, there's some spontaneity that has to go out the window just a bit because there's a lot of packing to do when you go somewhere, (laughs) you know, and it definitely more planning and stuff like that, but never impossible. That's anything that you like to do now can always be possible with the kids as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and I'm guessing too, it's probably as you've done it more and more, I'm sure it's gotten easier to, to like, know. okay, this is what we need to pack and and just kind of have a whole system down for it. Yes, definitely. We're kind of getting into the groove. I would say the only thing we haven't is feeding them because they seem to change their minds on what (laughs) like. So that's an ever moving target, but we're definitely becoming more efficient in, in what to keep the van stocked with and how to streamline all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I'd say with food and kids, that's uh, that's a tough one there. It is. I don't know that we'll ever have that figured out, but yeah, as long as they eat something, I feel like it's a win. Right. Uh, that's awesome. Um, well, Rachel, uh, thank you again for taking the time. I, I really appreciate it. Um, I really enjoyed this conversation and, and it, it I, I feel like, you know, to go off your last point there, I feel like it's really open to my, my eyes to, to not thinking that, you know, my travel days might be behind me once I have a family as well. Oh, so I appreciate it. You're not. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, really quick, um, before I forget, where, where can people find you? You can find me on Instagram um, under Be Bold Little Ones. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I, I definitely encourage everyone to go check out the page. Um, you have a lot of great content on there and 
and again, some beautiful places that I never would have heard of um, had I not looked at your page. So definitely encourage people to go check it out. Well, thank you so much. And yeah, get over to Utah. We've got some some places you need to see. Oh yeah, so so many places in Utah. Um, awesome. Well, thanks again, Rachel, and uh, I hope to see you somewhere around the world soon. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. Yep. All right. Have a good one. You too. Take care. Bye, everyone. Hey, everybody. Kyle here. If you enjoyed today's show and want more, you can always check out every episode on Spotify and Anchor. And now you can also listen on YouTube. Links are in the description below. If you if you want to see my travel pictures as well as travel pictures from guests on the show, you can check them out on Instagram. The page is called Our Travel Experiences Podcast. And if you want to share your own pictures on the Instagram page and or be a guest on the podcast, you can message me via that Instagram page or email me at ourtravelexperiences at outlook.com. I would love to see your pictures and hear about your travel experiences. And if that isn't enough for you, uh, make sure to check out my new show from around the world Fridays. Every Friday, I'm taking five to 10 minutes to discuss one specific travel topic, whether that be questions I get from listeners, sharing some souvenirs that I've bought over the years, or discussing one particular city or country that I've been to, and so much more. You, you'll be able to listen to that via Spotify and Anchor as well and be able to see the video version, which I'm really excited about, on YouTube. So check it out. I promise you won't be disappointed. Um, And thanks again for listening, and I will see you around the world soon.